My name is Tarmac, and this is your Game Industry News Wrap-Up for the week of November 19th, 2016. Despite my news embargo for Star Citizen, there was a pretty interesting newsworthy story that came out of Robert Space Industries this week. Responding to criticism of deadline pushbacks, RSI made a blog post that discussed the planning process, open development, and went as far as to show their internal date targets for release of various game systems. It's extremely rare to see behind the curtain to this level of detail for a major game release, so gamers can get a feeling for just how fluid some internal targets can be and how often deadlines can get missed. So pretty much the same feeling we've gotten without the product slate. Rumors abound for the Nintendo Switch. We've had everything from Ubisoft doing a Rabbids Mario crossover, which would be utterly ridiculous in all of the right ways, seeing Mario and Skyrim at launch, with Zelda Breath of the Grouchy Gamers who angrily corrected me when I said wind last time by mistake being delayed until after the Switch releases. And finally, a rumored $250 price, which given how it's a tablet means the power level of the device is going to be atrocious. We can hold out hope for an amazing launch lineup, and also that Nintendo's marketing experiment of not telling gamers anything until a few months before it releases goes better than Bethesda's marketing experiment of restricting review code immediately before a horrendously broken game. With more salt than the Dead Sea or Twitch chat, 3DS gamers who pirated Pokemon Sun and Moon are being banned from Nintendo Online services. About a month before launch, digital cracked versions of Sun and Moon began circulating online, and those users brazen enough to not only pirate the game, but also attempt to be online with it are being hit by the big old Mario banhammer. And this kind of ban essentially means that the 3DS unit itself can no longer access the eShop or other online features. One user went as far as to say, quote, I will never buy anything from Nintendo again, end quote. Which is amusing because there's only the guarantee that this user purchased a single thing, their 3DS, which is now an offline only device. Doesn't seem like Nintendo lost much on the deal. Electronic Arts, according to a blog post on their German website, is introducing stronger rules around the disclosure of their involvement with reviewers and influencers. There are two new watermarks that must be used by the content creators which do appear to be optional if you already have a better way of disclosing publisher relationships. So you can be prepared to see both advertisement and supported by watermarks in future content out in the wild blue internets. Advertisement means that they got paid, and supported by could mean anything from review code being received all the way up to plane tickets to come demo the product while being wined and dined at a lovely press event. Excuse me while I keep doing what I've always done with review code mentions in the description and audio track of the video. There's a Kickstarter for a game called Tanglewood, which is going to be released as a physical cartridge for the Sega Mega Drive. As nifty as it is to go full hipster retro, I just want to ask one question. But why? And the big news story of the week is the artistic snafu where Watch Dogs 2 has some exposed genitalia in the game. Now let's be clear here, Watch Dogs 2 is a mature rated game, so people 17 and older, who for the most part can all buy porn. Okay, nobody buys porn, but you get my point. The game has two main instances known about at the moment, including a nude guy peeing on a wall, and the most egregious example of depravity yet, a prostitute with less cloth than is required to be a morally upstanding citizen. The prostitute issue was discovered after a user on the PlayStation Network killed her and noticed that she was a little exposed to the elements, shall we say, sharing a screenshot and then getting suspended from PSN for his efforts. It's understandable that Sony might not want this kind of imagery displayed on the PlayStation Network where kids can see it, but it seems a bit odd to me to punish the user who found the thing in the video game that Sony certified as ready for their platform rather than the developer who put the artwork into the game in the first place. And as a climax and crescendo was approached, Ubisoft apologized and announced they will be removing the female nudity from the game. The dong is still fine though. And I really have only one thing to say. It's very telling that the moral outrage here is for part of life that we all enjoy to some degree or another. And the fact that it was discovered as a result of a dead prostitute was completely ignored. Because much like the fake dead prostitute in a video game, the moral outrage is also fake. This has been your Game Industry News Wrap-Up for the week of November 19th, 2016. We've been having some great chats in the super secret Patreon backer chat about feature creep topic ideas, so if you want to be a part of that and support the channel, link is in the description or head over to patreon.com slash tarmac. Thanks for watching.